Hello, I'm Dr. David Richardson. I'm a cataract and glaucoma surgeon in Southern California. On my morning commutes, I like to discuss those topics that there's generally not enough time to discuss in the exam room. We've been talking about visual field testing, and today I'd like to begin touching on what we can look forward to. And in particular, how virtual reality or VR headsets uh, may actually revolutionize the way visual field testing is done. So let's go ahead. As we've been talking about, the currently available visual field testing units called automated perimetry uh, have a number of issues that make them challenging, difficult, or just uh, plain inconvenient for uh, those who need to be tested to have the testing done. Uh, these include things like uh, uh, limited testing location, positioning requirements, requiring a response from the individual, and the fact that they're just plain boring. All of these things are related to the way the visual field testing units are currently uh, structured in terms of the size of them and uh, you know how the how the software is designed. Virtual reality headsets uh, are also known as VR headsets. Uh, the most uh, common or the, uh, the most well-known of which is the Oculus Rift or the Oculus Go um, may change this. Uh, virtual reality headsets essentially are headsets that are placed over the head and provide uh, a, an experience in one's visual field. So there's a screen in front of the eyes and objects, movies, games, stimuli can be projected uh, on the visual field of the individual who has the headset on. Now, traditionally, these headsets have been tethered to uh, large, powerful computers, but with headsets such as the Oculus Go, uh, there are now portable headsets available uh, that essentially allow the virtual reality headset to be worn anywhere uh, by anyone who can sit upright. And this opens up an entire new uh, set of possibilities for visual field testing. Let's talk about testing location. The current visual field units are rather large and cumbersome and far from portable. They generally have to be placed on tables and once they're set up in a doctor's office they don't move. So portability is not an option. Because they're generally in a physician's office it means that the, the individual to be tested has to find time in his or her schedule that matches the schedule of the physician's office, uh, drive to the office or pu use public transportation and um, and then set aside the time for the testing. So this involves a lot more than just the testing time itself. So it's quite clear that if a virtual reality headset was available on which visual field testing can be performed, that uh, this could potentially be done at home at a time and location convenient uh, to the individual patient. Uh, those patients who already have virtual reality headsets, it may someday be possible to actually uh, just have the visual field program downloaded onto the individual's headset and then have the data, the testing results, uploaded to the physician's office for review. Now, what we've been talking about so far is just you know the physical reality of the headsets. Um, um, we've not talked about the, the software itself. So, you know, it's certainly possible uh, to just simply uh, take the standard visual field testing and project it onto a virtual reality screen. And there are a number of companies that are already doing this. Uh, much of this information has been validated already in, in that it is possible to port um, similar testing on a virtual reality headset. Um, but that still requires a patient response. So uh, generally the patient uh, holds a handheld controller and when a stimulus is seen, whether it's a regular visual field device or uh, a virtual reality headset, 
uh, it still requires pressing a button, which can be problematic for someone who is arthritic or has a slow response time, and as we age, our response times tend to decrease, as well as, uh, you know, there's an issue with uh, dementia. Uh, not only is visual field testing challenging for those with dementia, but it worsens the reaction time. So one of the exciting things about VR headsets is it doesn't necessarily require using a handheld device. Uh, indeed, because these headsets track head movements, one could, and there are already devices that are um, being tested and may come to market, uh, that allow one to simply look around and when a stimulus is presented in the visual field, the individual can look toward it with the head rather than clicking with a handheld device. Now, of course, this requires um, that, uh, that one not have uh, cervical uh, disc disease or something that would make it difficult to spend time moving one's head around. But it's, for many people, a, a, a huge advantage over a handheld controller. Now this also just gets to the issue of positioning. Uh, with the standard visual field devices that are available in doctor's offices, it requires that an individual sit upright, place the chin against a chin rest, forehead against a forehead rest, and this can be quite challenging for those who are wheelchair bound or have back or neck problems. With a light virtual reality headset, uh, that essentially eliminates that issue for anyone whose neck uh, musculature is strong enough to hold the head upright and, uh, and uh, tolerate the weight of the virtual reality headset. Um, in theory, as long as one can sit upright, one could then take a visual field test on a VR headset. Uh, even somebody who's bed bound, as long as the individual could sit upright. And it's possible that software could be created uh, that could then be calibrated for someone in a supine or reclined position. Um, no reason why that couldn't be done, uh, although currently most VR headsets do require one to be upright uh, for the unit to work well. Now, all of these things that I've talked about are possible just by, again, porting the software algorithms over to a virtual reality headset. Uh, but what's really uh, exciting is the possibility of testing the visual field using completely different algorithms. Currently, the algorithm that's used is, as I describe it to my patients, the world's most boring video game. I mean, it really makes the old Pong look absolutely uh, just as exciting as possible. Um, it should be possible to create uh, visual field testing algorithms that could essentially gamify the visual field test. So it would make it more interesting, more interactive, more challenging. And um, we just need to, to wait and see what the software developers come up with. And then it would, of course, need to be validated against current visual field testing. Uh, so what I've talked about today is just one aspect of the potential future of automated uh, perimetry, uh, in this case just using virtual reality or VR headsets. And um, it really is quite exciting. Uh, it, uh, it could potentially make visual field testing more affordable, uh, more convenient, uh, potentially allow the individual to have testing done at home, which would then allow for uh, more repetitions of the field, uh, which as we've talked about before, the repetitions are incredibly important in order to determine whether or not field-to-field -field fluctuation is just uh, fluctuation or whether it's actual progression of disease.